Today we're going to learn about the element of art space and three strategies we, strategies we can use to create the illusion of space on a two-dimensional paper. So we're going to use overlapping, value, and relative size to create the illusion of three dimensions on a two-dimensional space. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the background, which is some mountains. We're going to go up in a triangular shape, back down, and then we can decide, do we want the other mountain to go behind it or in front of it? So we'll just go ahead and go behind, have maybe a nice valley, can be a little taller possibly. And then the last one, we can either keep going back behind or we can nestle that middle mountain in behind both. And we've created three mountains, um, one behind the other, behind the other. This is our background, so we can always label this background if we wanted to. And now we need to work on our middle ground. So we're going to create a gentle curving line that goes in front, and that will make a hill and then we can have another one coming up out of that. And that gives us some options to work with later. So this is our middle ground. And then we're going to have our foreground in the front. And this is where we add a lot of our detail. And I'll label it, but we'll still start working on it slowly and add to it throughout the strong. So what we want to do is create a little path and I want this path to jump here, go back in space and into the valley behind it. So it's going to be big and wide closer to us and we'll get narrower as we go towards the hill. And then maybe this hill is in front of it. It drops down and then we'll see it climbing up the other side of the next hill. And then it starts to get steeper here on this part of the mountain. So we can have it be more wiggly as it goes up towards the pass, it'll still get narrower and narrower. And we now have different levels of steady hand. And then back here, it might be more of a zigzag or a switchback. And you can see I've created a little too wide in this part of the trail. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase it out a little bit and then redo, a little, redo it. shaded in so we could see it better. Perhaps here we want a tree and we'll have to make it seem bigger than the mountains because it is closer so it'll make it feel closer. So a nice strategy for making a pine tree is you just start, like sometimes I make like a triangle shape with dots then I'll have an area to aim for and I make these wiggly lines and then the other side. Don't worry about it being too even because when I start shading everything it won't matter. And the curvy bottom, the trunk, and then I'm going to start shading it in. 
Then I can use the side of my pencil line to make it faster. So I have four fingers on top and my thumb on the side. And I'm just using a small golf pencil because it's pretty easy to handle on the small piece of paper. I notice with my other hand, I'm actually holding my paper pretty firmly so it doesn't slip around. And now I need to add a few details so it doesn't look like a cookie cutter. So I'll start adding a little bit of wispiness. And a few more details, some squiggly lines to create the illusion of branches to the front. Okay. Perhaps I have a few other trees over here, but they're farther away, so they'll be slightly smaller. So we can use that same strategy, or you can just freehand it. They're smaller, so it's not as much pressure. And then there's one, another one next to it. It's a little tiny grove and it's behind that tree. Let me shake it in. And perhaps there's a few more back here and instead of having a lot of detail, we can do like a zigzag and then a line. And if we get enough, it won't even seem so simple It'll just seem like a bunch of little trees back behind everything else. And we don't want them to just be floating, so we'll create some land for them to, to be planted into. Same with this one. Other things we can do in our foreground here is add some texture. Maybe this pathway has some grass, tall grass growing beside it. That'll break up the space so it's not so boring on this side as well. And I'm just gonna get some texture in there. I can go through and add some fine, finer detail towards the end, but I just wanna get some things in there to break up the space. And I'll start shading. Actually, what I'm gonna do is use small fine lines here to create grass. And I'm doing lots of random angles. all pretty dark so I add some lighter. But I see do lots of small little lines as they crisscross around. Then we'll start to create that illusion of taller grass. And since it's a grayscale we can use our imagination. Is it spring and this is green or is it fall and it's yellow or golden? I don't know. Maybe I have a nice boulder right here holding in the corner of this page so things start falling out in front of the tree. And I'm not going to be so careful on this side because it's a little farther away. So first I'm just going to shade some of these areas with a medium gray using the tip of my pencil. I'm using, actually I'm using the side of the lead so that it doesn't take so long. And I'm pressing medium or gentle. 
not, I don't want to press so light because then I won't get any of the lead on there. But I want a medium gray so that I can go lighter and darker from here. Because pressing hard is a tool and racing out is also a tool we can use. So we need to press here, creating an outcropping for those trees to sit on here as well. A nice little spot for them to be. We can break up that little that mound. Doesn't want it to look so curved because landscaping usually isn't so tidy unless it's maybe a sand dune. And then adding a few more texture lines and we can add some squiggly lines. Just make it look interesting. If you have a different way of doing this and shading, you're welcome to do that as well. Now we start, have to start using our value scale to create the illusion of depth for our mountains in our background. So right here, we can make it look like it's going back in space by making this area dark and making it go to like a medium by the path and then blending. This can be pretty light because our mountain behind it will also will be darker there. So that way, without having a hard edge, we're creating the definition of space. It's a strategy used in painting as well. You don't use a lot of outlining, you use a lot of value changes or color changes but since we're grayscale, we're doing the value change. So dark to medium, blending out. So I start with my dark, go to my medium. I can pull the pigment if I need to, because that pathway is pretty dark anyway. Dark here. Like before we shade this whole area, we're going to create some snow caps and there's wiggly lines and then we can start shading out from there. There's no right or wrong way to do a snow cap. because snow melts in random ways. And that goes to a lightish color. And I'll add more detail in a minute. Here's our second mountain, similar strategy. pull out highlights if we need to, snow cap, snow cap on this one as well, just random, just random zigzags really, and then again it's darker over the hill, I have the trees here so I don't want to obliterate them with the dark shade so I might blend in out or after Let's get that medium gray. And this back one is going to have the darkest. And then it kind of looked like a cool little valley. Maybe a place you'd want to go and have an adventure. So the best way to get a dark color is to use like your pencil straight down. I 
I'm gonna start adding some texture. I can make a ridge maybe coming off of one of these areas right here from the snow cap. It's a natural spot. And then again, shading back behind a bit, going to medium gray, just to create a little more interestingness. It doesn't have to be exactly the way you would see it in nature, but it can be um, how you see it in your mind. And sometimes drawings just create themselves And this one seems like it should be relatively smooth, so I might just add a little bit of lines there. And then to do the sky, you can create a nice medium line of um, medium gray, and then blend to white, because in the higher elevations, the sky tends to do that. It's dark, dark blue. And then as you get closer to the horizon, it gets wider. And you can use your finger to smudge it. And there we go, we've got a nice little drawing, creating the two or three dimensional illusion on two dimensional space, utilizing three different strateg strategies, of overlapping our lines, using value and relative size. So I hope you've enjoyed this drawing and I look forward to drawing with you next time.